Frioshki series review. In Lithuania, a small group of Eastern European women who are poor and don't have much of a chance of getting a good job are asked to sign a contract that they will agree to dance in a club in Belgium. However, this is all a scam and they are soon forced into stripping and prostitution. The series consists of 10 episodes, usually of about 43 minutes, coming to about seven and a half hours. Let me start with the positives. The acting is phenomenal. There is not a single performance in this that, even for a little bit, isn't fantastic. Some of the psychological accuracy Usually when this goes for psycholog psychological accuracy, it hits the mark. They actually did get actresses from these different countries. I believe everyone in this is from the country they're supposed to be. So, and they speak their native tongue when that makes sense, you know. So the couple of girls who all know Russian, even though they aren't, not all of them are Russian, they speak Russian to each other when they, you know, when they don't want the Belgium, you know, the guys in charge of this to understand what they're saying. There's, you know, Dutch spoken, some English also, and I think that's about it. It's also filmed and edited pretty competently. And I'm afraid that's it for the good about this miniseries. I really wanted to like it because this is such an important issue to deal with. What I think would have been better is if they had made a short documentary, maybe a single one hour show, perhaps with interviews of women who are now out of this, you know, with changed names, you know, the changing the voice, all that. Because it's clear that they care. So they, for example, try to make all the bad things that happen to women in this business, as well as a couple of things that I'm pretty sure don't happen very often in this business, happen to this one group of less than a dozen girls. So we have these events that don't make an impact on the overall. There are too many characters. We have a lot of trouble remembering even the names. And the personalities just tend to be kind of one note. Which is really unfortunate because when these actors are asked to act something other than what they've been acting up to that point, they just, they do a fantastic job. I would say the problems lie mostly in the writing. There are events that don't make any impact. There are a couple of characters you could cut entirely that are just there to you know, keep the pot boiling, keep it going for long enough so that they could have all these different things happen to them. This didn't need to be 10 episodes. I will say that each episode tends to be nicely separate from the rest in that it's, you know, its own little story arc as well as contrib contributing to the overall story arc. But yeah, some of them really didn't need to be there. And some of these characters also disappear for entire episodes simply because, well, the plot isn't really going to move forward this time. The There are a lot of unrealistic things. You know, for example, the, the guys running this thing keep getting away with doing things in broad daylight. And there's, there's no, no one complains. There's no mention of it. 
Early on, they make a huge deal out of passports and money, and then later, they stop mentioning it entirely. The... And the bad guys are far too one-note. It's... It's almost black and white in this. I mean, there are some nuances, you know. There aren't very many characters, at least, who are entirely good. But the bad guys tend to be entirely bad. Who would trust these people? We have Count Dracula and Grinning Psychopath. No one would follow these people anywhere. Not around the corner, not to another country. It doesn't happen. Surely, in real life, they're more persuasive, and they don't barely conceal the fact that they're talking about these women in derogatory terms right in front of them in a different language, yes, but still. At the end of the day, it just... An another sign of this being longer than it needed to be they clearly didn't have enough plot to stretch for 10 episodes, so what they do is put together these really overlong summaries, usually just of the episode immediately preceding it, even when none of it has any, or little of it has any impact on the episode we're about to see. And these will take you know, maybe three minutes, then there'll be one short scene, you know, from this new episode, the one we're currently watching, then there'll be a three minute introduction sequence. I'm sorry, did no one tell these people that you don't need to put all the names? I get it, it's a miniseries, there are a lot of names. You don't have to put them all in the opening credits scene. It's okay to run credits over the first couple of scenes. We can live with that. And the opening theme, uh, some will call this petty, but let's be honest, the theme tune is a bit half-heartedly, I mean, the lyrics aren't that good. Anyway, the bigger problem is that it is as exploitive of the women in this series as the men who are running this kind of thing. And in general, the miniseries shows these women half-naked, engaged in sex, way too often. You really don't need to constantly be showing that just to establish that's what they're doing. And why are they so naive? Several of them keep arguing with each other over, you know, can they really force us to prostitute ourselves? Even after one of them has been forced to prostitute herself. Anyway, the dialogue does have its moments. This tries to be clever a lot, and sometimes it really succeeds. There are lines in this that you're gonna remember. You might even quote them <clears throat> to other people. But all in all, just not that satisfying, and the ending is not that great wasted potential.